This lens here has to be the most unique, interesting, and definitely smallest lens I have ever reviewed here on the channel. This is a full frame lens, if you can believe it. 28 millimeters f 2.8. Look at the size of this thing. Most of the lens actually sits inside the camera body when you have it mounted. And speaking of mounts, it is a Leica L mount, which means you can adapt that to all of the other camera brands that are out there in the mirrorless world. So Canon RF, your Sony E, your Nikon Z, your Olympus, your Panasonic, and your Fuji as well. All you need is one of these little adapters here. This one is to my Sony E cameras and uh, is made by the same company, this one, Brighton Star. So Brighton Star makes this lens and they also on their website, if you buy the lens, you can also buy the corresponding adapter that your camera is, but uh, you also may just have some of those at home where you wanna order them elsewhere. I have one I think from newer and this one from Brighton Star. Stick them on and then you can take this lens from camera brand to camera brand at your leisure. But uh, you may be wondering how this works. Like where are all of the parts? Well, let me tell you, here is the uh, focus ring right here. See this little knob? That is how you focus. And I gotta tell you, I find that extremely intuitive. I don't know what it is, but uh, I just really prefer using this to actually turning a uh, big old rubber focus ring. I just find it's very precise. I'm absolutely obsessed with using this lens right now, especially for street photography. I just bring it out. I usually set it at around F8 or F11, and then uh, I do my little focusing and I am good to go. But you're wondering how you set it to F8 or F11. Look at this, it's this tiny little ring right here. So that is definitely a little bit fiddly. You do get used to it, I must say, but you'll never know really what your aperture is unless you flip the camera around and take a look at it. So for me, it's not a big deal because I'm usually setting it, like I say, F8 or F11, or if I want that shallow depth of field, I will set it down to F2.8 because this lens is actually quite sharp at F2.8, at least in the center. Not so much in the corners. We will talk about that in a second, but let's just marvel at the beauty of this lens. I mean, it rivals my own face. It just, it makes me want to use this lens and I love the way it looks on my camera. So here is my Sony a7 III and when it's mounted, let me show you. Look at that right there. You made my a7 III look like a sexy beast. Oh my goodness. I just love the way this looks. Even on an a7 III that nobody raves about as a beautiful camera. It looks beautiful to me with this lens attached. I just, oh. Just wait till I put it on my Fuji. Let's get this tiny little 25.5 millimeter filter thread. Actually comes with this little lens cap right here. It's a screw on lens cap. Goes on so smoothly. This thing is so well made. Even the lens cap, it just feels so premium. I should tell you, this is all brass. It's made of brass like old vintage lenses. And it also has this lovely etching around here. It is just a work of art to be sure. But you can also apply a little UV filter if you wanna protect your lens that way. It has the matching text. Oh, it just looks so good. And that way you don't have to put your lens cap back on so it's protected from the elements or from scratching it if you are a clumsy goat. Now the lens is not weather sealed so you don't wanna take it out in a monsoon but it is an all manual lens so there are no electronic parts to break. Now this lens is an obvious take on the pancake lens. Well, it's more than a pancake lens, it's more of a lens cap lens but it is a take on the uh, MS optical 28 millimeter. They started with 28 millimeter F4, then they went to 28 millimeter F2.0, and now they have a 28 millimeter F1.7. But these are handcrafted lenses by a man named Mr. Miyazaki, and uh, he makes them all himself just handmade, so it is hard to get one, even if you have the cash, because they are a little bit pricey. They're over $1,000 US usually, and uh, it is hard to get one even if you are willing to pay it because they're in such limited quantities. I'm really glad this is available for the masses so we can all enjoy the type of unique design that he came up with. And of course, it comes in at a much lower cost. We will talk about price and value towards the end of the video. So let's talk about how this lens actually performs. To tell you the truth, I didn't expect much when I opened this lens. I wasn't sure how this tiny little lens was going to render the photos, but I have to say, I think 
they're magical. It has a certain quality. It's this bridge between vintage and modern that I really love. Colors just pop out of this lens and it has a very unique looking image that I think is a positive. Is it an optically perfect lens? No, definitely not. This is not a clinically perfect lens. And if you don't want a unique looking image, you probably will want to stay away from this lens because while it's extremely sharp in the center, in fact, it is sharp all the way down to F 2.8. So uh, you can stop down the lens and still get some really nice sharp photos in the center, but it has what is called field curvature. So the corners are basically almost at a different focal length than the center. So the center might be sharp, but the corners will always be out of focus. And uh, because it's being adapted to other cameras, it gets even worse on certain cameras. However, judging by the people who have used this on Leica M mount cameras, there still is some lens curvature and you still are going to get those out of focus corners. So if you want corner to corner sharpness for your landscape or your architecture, then this is not the lens for you. But a lot of people who are using this lens, they are not interested in that clinical corner to corner sharpness. They are interested in a uh, flawed lens, if you will, that will give you unique characteristics, especially, especially for things like street photography, where you want the image to be a little muddied up, a little dirty, but still a great, you don't want the image to be poor, but you want it to be different and uh, having a lens that is just clinically perfect is not always what you are looking for, especially when you're doing street photography, that is not street walking. Let, let's move on. Now, a nice surprise on this lens is the lack of chromatic aberration. Whether you're talking about longitudinal chromatic aberration or lateral chromatic aberration, you aren't going to find much at all in your photos. You really have to pixel peep in some high contrast scenes to start to see some of that chromatic aberration. So I was really pleased with that result. Now, something you definitely will see on this lens is some flaring. Now, I went in expecting some flaring with the way that this lens is built and it has no lens hood, so you can't mitigate that in any way. So you have some bright lights, some sunshine, then uh, you probably are going to get some different types of lens flares. But once again, a lot of people who are using this type of lens for things like street photography, they like lens flares. They like interesting lens flares going through their photos at times. It adds a vintage, nostalgic look to a lot of your photos that some photographers really like. But if you are against lens flares, not for you, this guy right here. Either that or you always have to point it away from a bright light. Something else I expected was barrel distortion with this build of lens, but uh, this actually had less barrel distortion than I expected. I was pleasantly surprised. There is some, but it is fairly easy to correct in post. And something else that is easy to correct in post is the vignetting. Now you will see vignetting on this lens at all f-stops. If you look on the back here, just look at the size of that element. It is so big compared to the front. So that helps cut down the vignetting somewhat, but you are still going to see it at all of the different f-stops. You can correct that in post in a couple of clicks. Personally, for my street photography, I am always using vignetting, so I don't mind it, and I just leave it where it is. Looks good to me, it helps draw my eye into the center, and we all know the corners of this lens aren't the best anyway with that field curvature, so you might as well leave that vignetting in at least if you're me. So let's talk about price and value. This lens comes in at $360 USD. And while on paper, that may seem like a lot for a 28 millimeters F 2.8 all manual lens, I have to say that I think that is a good price for this particular lens. Mr. Miyazaki's lenses are over $1,000 and I probably will never get my hands on those. They are so limited. So I am very happy to be able to use this lens for my street photography. It is my absolute favorite lens to use. Brighton Star, I actually contacted them. I, uh, I asked them, could I review the lens because I love the look of it so much and it looks so unique. I definitely wanted to try it out. So they were kind enough to send this out to me at no cost to myself. So you can bear that in mind as you watch this video. But uh, this is a lens I 100% would buy myself. And in fact, it has made me look at uh, other unique types of lenses. And hopefully Brighton Star will continue to make 
unique lenses to bridge that gap between these handcrafted Japanese lenses that I will never be able to own and something different and unique compared to the mass market produced lenses, which I do love and they of course have their place, but sometimes you just want something different. You want a nice experience. So I wouldn't recommend this for beginners who just wanna go out and start improving their photography. Go get yourself a nice autofocus lens and uh, something that's not too expensive. But for those of you out there who want just a unique shooting experience and get some fantastic photos with this low profile lens cap lens, I mean, I just, I love it so much. I don't know what you'll think of it when you have it, but if you're anything like me, and if you are, then I would probably like you very much and you would like this lens very much. So thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, don't forget to leave a comment down below on telling me whether or not this is the type of lens that you would like. And if it's not, what type of lenses are you interested in? Maybe I'll review those after reading your comments. We'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.